I, I want to recognize the presence of all of you for coming here today to grace this occasion. Uh, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the World Bank representatives, the team from the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry, the team from other ministries, I see Dr. Puora from uh, the Ministry of uh, Education, uh, our brothers from uh, Italy, Karibu, I hope you understand some Swahili. World Bank team, <laughs> I, I am happy to be here. I know that I've missed uh, a number of this uh, launch that you have been doing. Uh, but this is a project that has been very close to my heart uh, since I joined the State Department. When I arrived at the State Department for Industry, uh, this project had been stalled for some time. Uh, almost a year or maybe less. Uh, my understanding was uh, that in this space of tech, sometimes even us as policy makers, sometimes we don't know what you are doing. So uh, I know that it had been stalled because of maybe not very well being understood in terms of how the project was contributing to the objectives of the ministry. Nonetheless, I think we had uh, very good discussions and uh, we decided that to restart the project and that will also accelerate its implementation. I am happy, I think, over the last uh, three months since we started reigniting uh, these projects and uh, the various agreements that were to be signed, uh, that we've seen increased number of activities uh, in terms of implementation of the project. I want to appreciate that the role of this project is to bridge the gap between because we have people walk different routes. I go to school, I get the skills, I get the knowledge, and then I have those to use those skills either to start a business or to start a project and hopefully that project can then be commercialized to bring me money. I am aware, like any other business, that it's easier said than done, especially for young people that have competing interests that may also be impatient with some of the aspects of the project, that it's not always easy to start something and make it successful and take it to scale. It is already documented, and I think you know, that nearly 70% of all new businesses started close within three years. And so I don't think that being in tech is any different. So we do know that we all aspire to make projects, to start projects, to start businesses, but not all of us will succeed. But uh, there are factors that will affect that success. And I think the reason why we are here is to try and babysit, to carry, to mentor, to support these young people that want to start projects so that they can be able to achieve more success, so that they can take their projects to the next level. And so part of this mentorship will only succeed, not because you have talked to me, so I think that if I was to look at factors of success, if I am mentoring somebody to succeed, what are some of the factors that will affect the rate at which I will succeed? So I suspect that there will be a role for the mentor. There is also a role for the mentee. And there's a role for the environment. In other words, for you to succeed in this job, you must be a good mentor, you must be knowledgeable, you must be passionate, you must be skilled, you must be knowledgeable. You must be passionate about what you are doing so that when that passion meets with the passion of the new entrepreneur and the environment is good enough for us to scale, then we succeed. So I am saying here that uh, for those of us that have these roles to play, not necessarily the Skies project, all of us that are managing different aspects of this project, we need to 
really play our game properly. Because at the end of the day, your success will be measured by how many people you have successfully mentored to move from the level where you found them to the new level where we desire them to be. And so I will be very keen to listen at the end of the project to say, I started off with this 50, their turnover was uh, 5 million per month, and today they are at 40 million. So really, so there is a big role for the mentor, there is also a big role for the mentees, and we must all play our complementary role so that we, we are able to succeed. We have all talked about the potential that we have, especially in Kenya, for tech. And uh, my take is that uh, the tech space in Kenya kind of evolved on its own in such a big way. I think it's almost like M-Pesa. When M-Pesa started, uh, even the Central Bank of Kenya was not sure how to regulate it. It started on its own. And uh, at some point, some people were saying, ban it. Others were saying, let's wait, let's try it. So the regulations were coming in place when us we were already transacting our money. Initially, everybody was very apprehensive whether it would be safe for me to send you money. But uh, the M-Pesa innovation changed the landscape forever. Why? Because we all knew that if I put my, my money in the bank, there's a bank manager, there's a teller, there is a safe, there is a watchman at the gate, sometimes a policeman with a gun. So when this money, when we started doing this transaction where there was no bank manager, and there was no watchman, and there was no teller, uh, many people, especially the older people, it took a bit of time. They were not understanding how the, you can put money into a place where there is no watchman. <laughs> they were waiting to see a gun, and there was no gun. And the money was flying up here in the air. And uh, I know trying to introduce my mother to that technology, she was not sure uh, what she was getting into. And that is purely what it... And today, we transact more money on M-Pesa in five minutes than all the banks put together in one month. So, if you think about it, that is how far that technology has come. And uh, I am happy that the people who are there making policy and regulations were courageous enough to impress that technology that has really not only changed the way we do business, but also put Kenya on the global map in terms of uh, technology. And it tells you what we can do. Uh, I'm also aware that there's a big gap between our training and what the world is looking for. When you look at Kenya, where it's going today, uh, and I talk as someone who has kids in my house that have gone into tech, uh, I have someone who did Bachelor of Computer Science in a local university. Uh, he finished, he was very good. Uh, almost first class owners, but in the real world of tech, he was not ready, completely. In fact, what ended up changing him, because I was always paying by m 800 shillings, 1,000, Udemy. So I also learned about Udemy, about Pythons, about C++. The, the, the real thing that put him into action are small things that really didn't cost money. After I had paid so much money at the university, and I'm not saying it was useless, <laughs> I was paying a lot of money, but I discovered that what this guy wanted was just 800 shillings to do cybersecurity, networking, yeah, the, the design, Python, and it's 800 shillings, and it's 1,200, and that has really changed his life. In fact, the difference between him and his classmates is those things of 800 and it was hardly 2,000. That for me is a wake-up call as we sit here in this tech space. I think sometimes we are talking about very big things. My experience is what these young people need 
to bridge the gap between what they have learned in a Tibet institution and the, the actual tech world is 800 shillings. So for lack of a better word in Kiswahili, wacha kizungu mingi hapa. Wacha na kizungu mingi. Me, what I want to hear is that we have a program that can pay for 800 shillings for 100,000 people. And that is 80,000. You know, we can spend a lot of money and time. Now, we make very small things very complicated. I'm talking from experience because this young man, once he had taken this 800, Udemy, Udemy, every time he was telling me Udemy. I didn't know what Udemy is up to now, I don't know. But he was able to move from a, from a student who had just finished university and he got a one job in software design and engineering and he moved to another job. And today, today as we talk, his work is sitting here in Nairobi working for a tech company in, 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 in uh, Silicon uh, Valley in the US. 800 shillings. So I don't know, uh, when I'm either 50 million dollars, if we divide by 800 shillings, <laughs> how many students can we support? And I think in my honest view, because I have seen how he has grown, that is what we need. That we have a lot of young people and you don't even need a degree, you don't need a, a diploma. You just need this small program in uh, cybersecurity, in networking, in software development, Python, whatever they call them. And it gives them the confidence, the skills to play at the global level. Because tech skills are not for Kenya. Tech skills are for the world. And what I have seen is that the gap between us, we have a lot of people that want to employ young Kenyans. Because once my son got into that space, I realized that there were thousands of others in that space. And there is more demand, but what is lacking is this 800 shillings to take this other mass to that group. So if you are sitting here, wewe na mimi tuko nakasi, tutafute hii shilingi mianane. Na tujukue hii watoto elf kumi. And we give them these skills that the world is looking for. Na tuwaje kisungu mingi. Hii kisungu diyo mingi. Siju kama tunaerawana. Hii naweka kwa luka yetu kwa sababu nataka tuerawana na Anthony Mwangi Araka. We have a lot of appetite for Kenyans to work in that space. The, 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 the bridge is, is very small. What they need is those small little short courses, one week, two days, one week, four days, like that. He pays for that and he moves to the next level. So I am challenging anybody who is uh, touched by that. Kama tunataka kusaidiane, even if we do a fundraising, tufanya arambe hapa, I will be the chief guest, sawa sawa. Because I know what it means. I have seen it, how it has transformed uh, the young people that I have seen in my life. And uh, you know that even as a government, uh, we have impressed the issue of technology. We have already talked about the Hustler Fund. We take it for granted. But there is no other government in the world that has developed an, a, 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 a system of delivering a loan to its citizens. You know, we take it for granted. Because as Kenyans, we are Najua Kizungi na Gwanga Mingi that you have a government that has developed a loan product for its citizens where you go in, you apply yourself on your phone, you get the money, it determines your limits, it knows when to recover the money, and you have a loan product where you are giving people money and your recovery rate is over 90%. Even the banks have not reached there. And you have almost 1,000 people borrowing money every month, every, not every, every minute, from a government-developed system. It just tells you that uh, the government is resonating with you. So, to songe pamoja, sindio? And we also have e-citizen that you already know. Kava uh, mkononi. Every government service, whether you are looking for a passport, an ID, a visa, driving license, is all on your phone. And... Uh, that is where it's going, and of course it was a bit fragmented since then this new government came in. We have now amalgamated on that one platform, 
8,000 services, government services, that you can access. And it just tells you that we, we in terms, so we are not just talking, we are not just encouraging the private sector, but we are also in that space ensuring that it actually uh, works. Um, we've also got the Ajira Digital, and that's the place where the government, and the Digira, uh, Ajira Digital is basically training young people for the, for the things that I have said. We have Ajira Digital, it has not worked very well, but the initial idea was to get each county to set up a training center for ICT for young people. Some counties are more ahead than others, but it is something that we think really holds the future for this country. Why? Uh, because as we talk here now, um, we have a lot of young people that are sitting here and working. Those of you who know the PBO, the Business Process Outsourcing, we currently have over 20,000 uh, young people that are working in outsourced services uh, for companies, global companies. Uh, people sitting here in Nairobi and uh, giving uh, customer care services uh, for British Airways, for companies that are large and global. And um, we think that there's a lot of space because we have a young people that are able to, to move in on that. And you also know that when me and the, most of you went to school, we used to say that the biggest foreign exchange earner was coffee and tea and tourism. Today, our b biggest foreign exchange earner is diaspora remittances. The one million or so Kenyans that are working out of the country. I saw last month, I think I saw yesterday, that in one month these people are remitting back here 106 billion Kenya shillings. So in a month, you are talking about, in a year, you are talking about 1.2 trillion. So we have moved from exporting coffee to tea to tourism to the human resources, which means that uh, the real potential, and we have a lot, we can multiply that by four is to give people the right skills, either to work here or to work from wherever other space that they need to be, and I think uh, that is where we, we are looking at. Uh, so I really want to take this opportunity to thank all the partners that have been involved in this project, World Bank, uh, my team from the ministry, the partners that are cooperating on this project, it is a very, very important uh, project, uh, mentoring people to grow at different rates. But as I have said, we will get more people entering into the business if we give them the basic skills that they are needing so that we can incubate, so that we can accelerate. So that, uh, and as somebody said, because the global world is now looking at Kenya for tech, uh, they are almost quickly grabbing all the people that have the right skills. If you have the right skills today, uh, as a local company, you will not find somebody to employ, which means that we need something that will push more people into that space, and that's why I have been uh, encouraging you uh, that we move in that direction. And as you've seen in this government, we're also moving very fast. So we really want to make sure that uh, everybody moves along with us. Uh, for industry where we are sitting, I think uh, Andrew Mwangi, the, Anthony is wondering now, where is industry here? <laughs> because when people think about industry, they think about <laughs> bulk of cement that has been produced <laughs> and how much cooking oil that has been produced. <laughs> That's how we measure. I, I do know that uh, this space is changing the way we do our manufacturing in terms of robotics, in, st in terms of the softwares that we are using. Uh, for the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, and so tech is really uh, uh, very, very core for us. Uh, we now know vehicles that are completely assault, uh, assembled by robotics. The training space, if you look at teaching, we have a lot of robotics that is going on there. And so mine is really to say that we are here for a purpose. We have a sector, we have an industry that has come of age. It is an industry that holds a lot of potential. It is an industry that holds a lot of opportunities for jobs, both locally and internationally. It has proven itself. We are the players in this sector. We are the drivers in this sector. We are doing what we can, but we need to do more. And we need to do it faster. 
and we need to do it more efficiently and we need to do it with some sort of urgency because we have a lot of young people that are waiting for jobs the opportunities are there i have seen it myself as i've said i have two tech young people in my house that have moved from very small levels one of them is now a senior software engineer as good as anyone else working for companies in the in the u.s uh, and and he's able to deliver he's able to compete he's trained here it tells you that the opportunity is there so for me um as i've said in kiswahili uh, let's be focused let's create value in this space let's create impact at the end of the day we want to see for each one of you that is contracted to do work in this space we will be very keen on the difference that you make uh, and the difference that you make will be measured by how many young people you really transform not how much english you speak so kingeresa igwe kidogo kasi kwe mingi sijiga matunairawana so we really want to make a difference and we must have that passion let it not be a job you are doing a job because it's a job but you are doing it because there is something in you burning you really want to make a difference you really want to take these young people to the next level because you can see the potential you can see the value that your work can bring so mine is to really encourage you and to tell you that uh, as government we will support you will provide the right uh, uh, policy regulatory environment we are also grappling with our own you saw we just put up the e-citizen before we could finish uh, the same young people had already hacked into it <laughs> and because of that i think we have now advertised 250 jobs for cyber security those, are, <laughs> those of you who have been watching now we are the government is uh, looking for 250 cyber security experts because our systems must work and we want to lead by example because when the e-citizen goes down it goes down with all of us uh, because we are all there and it is supporting not just that but uh, a lot of mpesa uh, and other uh, backbone and i think it's good uh, because so whoever hacked that system just created jobs for others so <laughs> so 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 it means that uh, you can see the potential and i'm not saying now go and hack so that you create more but <laughs> But it just tells you that uh, it's working. And uh, uh, so let me thank you very much. Thank all the partners. Encourage you to do what you are doing in the best way possible. And with those many remarks, it's now my honor and pleasure to officially launch uh, the key project component on strengthening Kenya's innovation ecosystem and call for applications. I thank you. Thank you.